Hey there, so in this video, I'm going to quickly talk about how one can leverage trade via DEXs. But before I do though, I want to first talk about the risks involved with this. The first risk is contract risk, meaning that there could be a bug in the code and thus something unusual happens with your funds and therefore you can lose all of your coins. The second risk is with getting liquidated. What this basically means is that your assets are sold off because your debt has reached a certain ratio with respect to your assets or your collateral. When this happens, you'll pretty much lose all of your coins that you've put up as collateral and it'll also trigger a taxable event. The last one is exit scam risk. You run the risk that the DEX that you're using closes shop and along with your funds that you've locked up with them. Now that you understand the risks involved, I also want to say that this method is not perfect. What I mean by this is that there are certain limitations on what you can borrow and loan as collateral as I'll show and explain in this video. Now this video is just an introductory video and I'll make another video in the future with an example on how to actually put on a trade on margin. Having said that, let's get started. So in order to put on a leveraged trade or trade on margin, you'll need two things. The first is a decentralized exchange that will actually allow you to borrow funds. Not all exchanges will allow for this. And this is why I said that this method of leverage trading isn't perfect because of these limitations. Now, some examples of DEXs that will allow you to borrow funds, however, include Compound Finance for Ethereum, Venus for Binance Smart Chain, and Anchor Protocol for Terra. The second thing that you'll need is collateral that's accepted by the DEX. Now in terms of the limitations, let's take a look at a couple of examples. So for example, let's just say that you have a bunch of ERC20 link that you'd like to use as collateral. Not all DEXs accept link as collateral. If you go to compound finance, they only allow you to borrow it, but you can't supply it. However, on Aave, they'll allow you to both supply and borrow link. Another example is if you've only got BNB that you can supply. This means that you can only supply those coins on DEXs that run on Binance Smart Chain. This would be the same thing if you wanted to use your Bitcoin as collateral. There are no decentralized exchanges that will accept Bitcoin as collateral. However, you can always convert that Bitcoin to something like wrapped Bitcoin or get a BEP20 version of BTC, which is BTCB, to then use as collateral on Venus as example. So after all that, it's time to put that leverage trade on. Now, depending on whether you're going long or short, that'll determine the coins that you should borrow against your collateral. If you're going long, you'd want to borrow stable coins to then use those stable coins to buy more of whichever coin you're going long on. You'd ideally want to put non-stable coins like Ethereum as an example as collateral. However, if you were going short, you'd borrow the coin you're going to short and ideally put in stable coins like BUSD or USDT for collateral. After you've obtained those coins you're short on, you'd then want to sell them on an exchange and then obviously buy them back, hopefully at a cheaper price. Now that I've gone through the process of leveraging with decentralized exchanges, I do want to add a couple of notices that you should be aware of. The first is that each decentralized exchange will have their own loan to value ratios, which is how much they'll lend out to you based on your assets. This is essentially how much you can leverage. Another thing to keep in mind is the value of your assets and to make sure that you leave a good margin of safety between your assets value and your debts value. Don't forget that interest also adds on to your debt. The last thing to be aware of is the fees associated with this. As each blockchain has different fees associated with the transaction, it may cost you quite a bit in transaction fees, especially on Ethereum when the network's congested to execute these transactions. So there you have it. That's how you can leverage with a decentralized exchange. In a future video, I'll show an example of borrowing to enter a leveraged trade. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're interested in getting the most up-to-date content in the Canadian crypto space, check out www.cryptoforcanadians.ca. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.